and they grow it on open water, which is warm enough. We will drive there now. This road is a total asshole. These are the Rostov region roads, gentlemen. We have to slow down, turn and basta. Where Piglet and I are going is a dead, dead secret. And we won't tell about it. Hello everyone, this is Anton Belcher. I'm an engineer and I've been building fish farms for over 10 years. Right now we're traveling in Baikal through the Rostov region of Russia. This is actually my homeland. We passed through a lot of familiar towns, where everything is saturated with memories. Rostov, Novochukovsk, Shakti, Novoshaktinsk. But our final aim is the town of Volgodonsk. I've long wanted to show you this farm. The Australian red clawed crayfish is farmed there. And today I will show you what it looks like what it consists of and how it operates in general. We will take a closer look at this farm. We will understand the technology, how Australian crayfish is grown in the latitudes of the southern regions of Russia, due to the fact that the Rostov region has rather a warm climate. The project investors decided to combine two farming technologies. Juvenile crayfish are grown in rice indoors. These juveniles are grown during the cold season, and then they are transferred into open ponds in spring. And growing Australian crayfish up to grow out weight takes place already in warm water, but in open ponds. This way, the investor increases productivity and reduces costs, lowering the production prime cost. This farm was constructed three years ago and put into operation. However, the owners have already won several prestigious awards, including gold medals at food chose for great high-quality product. So I have no doubt that good tasty crayfish is grown there. This farm produces around 2.5 tons of growth products per year, and that's for now. But in the nearest future, and the capacity allowed that, the investors are planning to reach the output of 10 tons, which is more or less an industrial capacity. And then I will show you everything. Friends, I wanted to say a few more words. Firstly, this farm is the farm of our acquaintances and partners. The company name is Rostov Lobster. They built this farm with their own hands, so we were there as guests. Secondly, we visited it at the end of August, and almost all fingerlings had already been transferred into the ponds, so almost all the trays were empty. But I really wanted to show you this farm. I wanted to tell you about growing crayfish in rice. Nevertheless, I promise you that videos from crayfish farms, which we are constructing, will be coming out soon. So start from watching this video, it will be just the beginning, and the sequel will be even more interesting. The farm consists of three main departments. The first is the incubation block. I'm now standing in front of what is essentially an unremarkable building. This is where the hatchery and the broodstock department are located on two floors. There is also a processing plant. I will tell you about it a little bit later. And the third part of the farm is the open ponds. All in all, there are eight hectares of land occupied by the ponds, where juveniles are transplanted to in spring, ungrown up to the end of August, when they caught and sold. Well, let's go inside. I'll show you what's there. We will see the incubation block, the processing department. I'll tell you all about what's inside those departments and how it all works. Why did they decide to farm Australian crayfish and not any other hydrobiont? Why not its European counterpart, which is so well known in my country? It's very simple. The Australian crayfish has several significant advantages. Firstly, it grows faster, objectively faster than conventional river crayfish. Secondly, the meat structure and quantity, as well as meat yield. The Australian crayfish has more meat, and generally, it's considered tastier and more valuable than river crayfish, and it's certainly well adapted to growing in rest, as well as to growing in warm water open ponds. In addition, the Australian crayfish farming process is easy enough. That is, it's quite simple to grow your own stocking material. So the combination of these factors is certainly in favor of the Australian crayfish. By the way, Australian crayfish, unlike river crayfish, started to be farmed all around the world probably 20 years ago. Its disadvantages? Of course, there are some. It has two major drawbacks. The first is that it has absolutely no tolerance to cold weather conditions. And in Russia, my country of origin, which is a northern country, it's a significant factor to take into account. In other words, you won't be able to keep it in ponds during winter, unless, of course, you live in some southern regions. And secondly, it's a cannibal one way or another, just like any other crayfish. If you stock and hold these crayfish together, they will grow unevenly. Some will get bigger, others will stay smaller. If 
you don't sort them, you will have a lot of cannibalism. If you don't put a shelter for them, they will also have a very high cannibalism rate. So this is the second important factor to consider. Since crayfish are well-known cannibals, a mate is also food for them, and they eat their fellows very willingly. So special shelters are provided for them in the trays. And these shelters have a lamentary construction. They are basically made from sewage pipes. What are they for, and how do they work? During molting, the crayfish hides in the shelter, and it uses the shelter on a daily basis. Just during molting, when the crayfish has no shell. When it's most vulnerable, it hides into these designated places, and its fellows cannot eat it. These are the shelters that are evenly distributed all over the tray, so that the crayfish can all hide there in one way or another. Well, I'm now standing inside the incubation block. This building is two-storied, and each floor area is 200 square meters. The top floor, the second floor, where I am standing, is completely occupied with fish holding tanks. The total volume of these tanks is about 500 square meters. Here the broodstock is kept. After incubation, fry is grown up to 20 grams. By the way, the incubation cycle takes place in December, and approximately in the middle of May, fry and grown up to 10-20 grams is transferred into the ponds. The design of the tanks is quite simple. It's a metal rack where the trays are placed in three floors. Generally, each tray can have any dimensions. They are adjusted depending on whether larger juveniles or lava, or even broodstock are held there. The trays are made of 4 mm thick polypropylene, and this construction is rather simple. The water is supplied from these white polypropylene pipes through the inlet and after it's discharged into the central sewage. Water moves in circles inside the tray as the tank is rounded. Of course, all the suspended solids are collected, as still these are crayfish trays, so the stuff is busy practically all the time. Some impurities are of course drained independently by gravity, but some of the dirt has to be removed manually. Let's talk about what needs to be organized inside the building in order for RAS system to operate properly. And as far as the engineering infrastructure is concerned, electricity is needed first. If it's a more or less industrial farm, then the power must be 380 volts. Also, heating is required. At this particular farm, it's provided by means of a gas boiler, which is a boiler that's gas-fired. There is a thermal loop laid through the radiators, and the radiators heat the whole building, which is quite a classic system. Ventilation is also needed. To be honest, there is none here, so as you can see, I'm getting sweaty. That's normal, but that's not critical. Sure, it's not very comfortable for the staff and good for the equipment, but in this case, they saved on ventilation, so that's the way it is. Lighting is needed too. As you can see, there are lights that are placed between the lines of trays, so it's as comfortable as possible. What is applying sewage? Here, there's a central water supply and a central sewage system. Since not much water is needed, the costs, even for central water supply, are minimal. So, how is RAS designed and operating at this particular farm? Through these grey pipes, the water from the trays gets into the collector and is pumped down to the ground floor. On the ground floor, this farm has a water treatment system. How is the water treatment system designed here? In principle, mechanical treatment is fairly standard for us, only there is no drum filter. There are simpler systems installed, like settling tanks and mats. Next, there is the biofilter, a standard moving bed biofilter, then a biofilter operating on fixed bed to additionally capture fine mechanical suspended matter. Well, that's basically all. Then the water returns to the trays without any oxygenation, disinfection, and generally speaking, other additional units are not necessary. Crayfish grow well, practically don't get sick if you properly observe sanitary regime and don't deliver diseased fry from any other farm. You may ask me about the source of oxygen. Where does it come from? It's very simple. The oxygen that is supplied to the fixed bed by a filter is enough for growing fry at a relatively low stocking density. That is, the oxygen is supplied to the tanks with the water about 100% saturation. It's enough for all that volume of crayfish that is contained in the trays. Then the water is pumped back to the trays through these white pipes and it's the full circle. Generally speaking, there is nothing special about this particular recirculating system, except maybe the control system, that the system for growing Australian crayfish is relatively simple. The total volume of these trays is 90 cubic meters, 
What exchange is 1 to another per hour, about 90 cubic meters per hour are pumped through the water treatment system and returned back to the trays. The system is closed, of course not completely, as it's not the case with any rice facility. Roughly from 3 to 7 percent of the total water volume, even a little less as not so many crayfish are kept in the trays, must be changed every day. Sure, at this farm there are also utility rooms, such as an operator's room, various warehouses, feed store, equipment equipment store, sanitary facility. There are downstairs on the ground floor. There are also technical rooms, such as, for example, a generator room, a room located feed pelletizing machine. By the way, let's now talk about feed. What do they feed the crayfish and rats? At this particular farm, the owners have taken a very interesting approach to crayfish feeding. They don't buy ready-made extruded feed and they don't feed it with something mixed in paste. They have approached it in a different way and have installed their own pelletizing machine. It's a small machine where they put ingredients like grains, fish meal, maybe some vitamin supplements, as well as other ingredients. And this pelletizer completely processes, grinds the ingredients and gives out a nice neat pellet, which is fed to the crayfish. And these pellets already have a fully balanced composition. Of course, elk bark is also fed to the crayfish. Nevertheless, the crayfish's main diet is pelleted feed, produced in-house. So, fries and grown. What is done next? How to transfer it to the ponds? It's simple enough. Fish handlers use ordinary nets to catch these crayfish and to load them into thermoboxes. What's a thermobox? It's a standard container with a lid. Juvenile crayfish are loaded into it without water and transported to the ponds by trucks or smaller vehicles. And by the way, live crayfish is released for sale absolutely the same way. Thermoboxes are opened at the ponds and the crayfish is carefully unloaded into the pond. Generally speaking, that's all. Everything is done. Transporting crayfish is much easier than transporting fish juveniles. And so we're moving towards the ponds. What happens there? Approximately in the middle of May, crayfish fry is brought here and unloaded into these ponds. The ponds are really small. These are four ponds, two hectares each. The total area makes eight hectares. The depth is from 70 centimeters to 1 meter and 30 centimeters. These are rather shallow ponds, but deeper ones are not needed for crayfish. Moreover, they are used only during warm seasons and are not used in winter. Crayfish is unloaded evenly into these ponds and grows up up until the end of August for three months, June, July, August. Well, to be exact, from 3 to 3.5 months. And this is the life cycle of crayfish in these ponds. During this time, crayfish manages to grow from 10-20 grams to an average of 70-80 grams. All the time it's fed with the same pelleted feed. By the way, all this time it can be fed with sprout millet in addition to the pelleted food, and it eats this millet very well. What is usually done during these three months? Well, the crayfish is being grown in the ponds. Basically, the stuff fed it. Make sure that predators such as herons, turtles, and some others don't get close to the ponds. They simply make sure that no other creature which is bigger and stronger can eat this crayfish. And the third thing is probably periodic checkups of water parameters to make sure it has enough oxygen and ammonia concentration is not exceeded. That's pretty much it. There is no much else to do. And so, at the end of August or at the beginning of September, the level of water in the ponds is lowered to minimum. The crayfish is transplanted into cages and is washed. It's kept without feeding so that external smell are eliminated, that the meat is cleaner and tastier in general. Then it's picked up from the cages in the same way and transported back to the farm. It gets back to its, so to say, homeland, but not to the top floor, but to the processing department located on the ground floor. What crayfish processing is like? In what form is crayfish sold from this farm? And even more interesting, where is it sold to? I guess it would be better to start with the types of final products for sale. What is done with crayfish? Well, first of all, it's sold frozen. Naturally, it's also sold alive, as not all crayfish requires processing. There are also cooking machines here at the farm, in order to sell, to deliver it to the consumer already cooked. Because in my country, people are mostly ready to buy and consume boiled crayfish. At this farm, they don't actually process it in any other way. And of course, I need to mention a vacuum packer or a vacuum packing machine. You can refrigerate the crayfish, you can boil it, but after that, it needs to be vacuum packed. The product lasts longer, and also you may want to brand the final product and indicate this brand name on the package. And by the way, 
This farm also offers such a thermo package that you can boil directly in the pot without opening it. You throw the crayfish into the pot right in a vacuum pack, boil it, take it out, it's ready. All the process is very simple. It's wonderful for a modern consumer who doesn't like to bother. And of course, there are refrigerators in the processing shop, which are used for different purposes, including the storage of finished products. That's all that needs to be said about the processing. It's elementary. The whole department takes up two small rooms of no more than 40 square meters. Now let's talk about production costs. This will probably be of interest to almost everyone. What does production cost consist of? Let's break it down into components. The first is feed. The second is electricity. As I told you earlier, stocking material at this farm is free, as it's not purchased, but is grown right here. Then there are heating, water supply and stuff. And that's basically all. There are no other special costs, except for logistics, marketing and sales, and also some minimal maintenance expenses, which are almost close to zero. So what is the prime cost? Well, since it's a specific farm, and there is a certain commercial secret, I can't disclose it and tell you about the exact figures. But I can say that a similar farm, located in similar latitudes, the cost would be around 3.5 6 US dollars per kilo. All in all, that's a fairly small figure. And what about the sale? First of all, where to sell? And secondly, at which price? The final products can be sold to restaurants and beer shops. It's very simple. Crayfish equals what? Right, beer. Wherever beer is consumed, you can sell crayfish. So wherever there are beer restaurants, beer shops, you can sell Australian crayfish because it's a great addition. At what price? The average wholesale price for crayfish starts at 12 US dollars. Of course, I don't take into account those periods when it's fished in high volumes from lakes and ponds and sold straight away. Then prices can go down. But the wholesale market price is from 12 to 17 US dollars per kilogram. Of course, sometimes the price can drop, but that's the advantage of RAS. You can always abstain from selling your product at the time when crayfish is sold for next to nothing. The retail price starts at 17 US dollars per kilogram and probably ends at 29 30 US dollars per kilogram. It all depends on the grow out weight. As I mentioned earlier, they grow crayfish at this farm up to 7 to 80 grams, so the adequate price is somewhere between 20 21 US dollars per kilo. Pretty good margins overall, as you can see. And here lies the main nuance. If you manage to produce your own feed and do without purchasing extruded feed, as the crayfish eats and grows perfectly on such pelleted feeds. If you can organize to farm your own stocking material, and if your latitudes allow you to perform part of the farming process in open water bodies, then you can reduce the prime cost due to transplanting fry from rats to ponds, stopping rats, and thus saving on water, electricity, and heating. Well, even if this is not possible, and you live somewhere in the north, that's not critical. If your rats is designed well, you will be able to grow crayfish at an adequate prime cost. Well, today we have visited a RAS farm for growing Australian red clawed crayfish. We saw what it looks like and what is required for this farm to operate properly. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, please press the like button and subscribe to my channel, the channel on how to grow fish or crayfish and make good money from it. Bye!